Hey everybody, Rick Needham handicapping thoroughbred racing from the Spa, Saratoga Race Course, Saratoga Springs, New York on Sunday afternoon, August the 7th, and this is my Equibase Winter Circle Race of the Day. Let's take a look at Race 10, the feature this afternoon, folks, 5.48 p.m. Eastern Post Time. This is the Alfred G. Vanderbilt Handicap, six furlongs on the dirt, grade one, three-year-olds and up racing for $250,000. Contenders number four, Amazing Destiny, number eight, Trap Shot, number five, Cala Jabroa, and number two, Bank Merger. For you folks who enjoy a little thoroughbred racing history to accompany your handicapping efforts today, Alfred G. Vanderbilt, for whom this race was renamed, was one of the driving forces behind thoroughbred racing in America for most of the 20th century. Born in London in 1912, his mother, Margaret Emerson, took him to his first race, the Preakness in 1922. He often said after that, I was hooked. On his 21st birthday, his mother gave him Sagamore Farms, her racing operation in Glendon, Maryland. In the early years, Vanderbilt often slept in the barns overseeing the breeding and training of his stable. He was president of Pimlico twice, the first time when he was just 20. As a stable owner, his first major acquisition was Discovery, one of the great handicapping horses of the age, became his foundation sire. Vanderbilt was elected to the Jockey Club as the youngest member in its history in 1935 and eventually campaigned not one but four Eclipse Award winners, Champions Discovery, Next Move, Better Roses, and the Great native dancer. During the late 1930s and early 1940s, he owned and ran Pimlico Racetrack outside Baltimore, arranged the famous match race between Seabiscuit and War Admiral in 1938. He was the president of Belmont Park in Pimlico at the same time before joining the Navy. During the Second World War, he campaigned a PT boat in the South Pacific and was awarded the Silver Star for bravery under fire. He returned to racing with characteristic zeal bringing his greatest champion native dancer to the track in 1952. The Grey Ghost won all nine starts as a two-year-old was named Horse of the Year. He won every start as a three-year-old too, except the Kentucky Derby, which he lost by a head to Canehoy's stable Dark Star. The dancer was Horse of the Year again in his fourth year. All told, he won 21 of 22 with a single second place finish in the 1953 Kentucky Derby, his only career loss. Alfred G. Vanderbilt continued racing throughout his life, served as the chairman of the board of Naira from 1971 to 75. The New York Turf Riders voted him the man who did most for racing a record four times, posthumously renaming the award in his honor. He died November 12, 1999 at his home in Millnet, New York after attending morning workouts at Belmont Park. Here in the 27th edition of this stakes event, number four, Amazing Destiny, a five to one shot, has hit the board in power run fashion each of his last five outings, including a power run win in his third race back. Number eight, Trap Shot, the morning line favorite, the pace profile leader in this field, sprinting at six furlongs on the dirt, has hit the board in four of his last five overall, winning three times, including a power run win in his last start. Jockey Johnny Velasquez has been in his arms on two previous occasions, winning them both back today for a third ride gun for a hat trick win. Race 10 summary number four Amazing Destiny tops my contenders list which also includes number eight Trap Shot, number five Calibre Choa, and number two Bank Merger for a 5-2 in the 10th from Saratoga, the $250,000 grade one Alfred G. Vanderbilt handicap. Bonus long shots let's go to Woodbine, first race eight, number three, Pete Slender, an eight to one shot, takes a ten level class drop, good overall speed for this nine furlong route test, River Downs, race six, the speed honors in this claiming field today are shared by number one, Princess Christine, nine to two, and number seven, Irish Vision, who is six to one. So from Saratoga on a Sunday, Rick Needham for the Equibase Winter Circle, reminding you as always to please bet with your head, not over it.